Hi all. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, myself Ajay uh, works with VMware. Uh, multiple teams keep on reporting us few problems with the Perf tool, and one of uh, them we will discuss today. Uh, that is the Perf tool doesn't account for the task sleep. Uh, I hope you like the icon. So here we are trying to represent. There are some tasks. Uh, which is in the sleep state, uh, but our perf tool uh, is not mentioning anything about the sleep time uh, during the profiling. Uh, profiling of uh, multi threaded application are helpful to analyze performance. And to do further optimization, let's say we use perf tool to profile it and collect samples. The outcome should represent time taken at each step. Uh, one of the key parameters that would help to know at what interval and for how long various threads uh, are in process sleep and resume. This would help identify potential uh, improvement and bottleneck in the design and implementation. So Perf tool uh, also has something of CPU, uh, which is similar to my talk. However, we try to implement in some different way. So first we will discuss on Perf tool, not considering the task sleep time while calculating the CPU uses. Followed by the perf architecture, I will cover a very brief uh, architecture of the perf tool, uh, which is required for my talk, and then we will move to the recommended solutions. So, um, as we know, perf is a uh, performance monitoring and analysis tool for Linux. Perf record, perf report. Uh, are very useful to identify which part of the code is consuming the CPU. However, the perf couldn't tell for how much time the process was in sleeping that is not consuming the CPU. It is because uh, perf never collects the sample when task is sleeping. In this session, uh, we will see why the perf uh, no, is not collecting the samples when target task is in sleep state. And we will say uh, CPU users calculation is only based on the samples when the task was running. Uh, so as uh, no sleep sample, so perf uh, doesn't provide any info on how long uh, the task was sleeping. So in this uh, slide, you can see some uh, graph. So the blue line is representing the task is running. Red line is representing the task is sleeping. So these samples uh, which are in rectangle shape, uh, basically number uh, purple and the green boxes are representing. We have collected the samples and for red, uh, these circles are representing the perf is not able to collect the samples. So uh, let's assume our fun uh, our program was having only two functions, uh, function one and function two. And as uh, purple boxes are representing, we have collected the samples two times for function one as number one and six. And for function two is representing, we have collected the samples uh, six times. Uh, that is green box. That is uh, sample number two, three, four, five, and seven, eight. So as of now, current implementation, uh, it wouldn't uh, consider this task sleep state. So it wouldn't capture any of the sample. And during the calculation, it will assume uh, there are total eight samples. And with some uh, with some calculation, we will come to know function one uses is 25% and function two uses is around 75%. So in short, uh, actually it wouldn't consider these samples. That's why it wouldn't show anything. And if you will see these readings 25 and 70 percent, so it seems like our program or our task was consuming a hundred percent of the CPU. So this is what we want to change. So in the next slide is the expect. Okay, so our goal is to 
uh, it should consume uh, it should consider these sleeping time and while calculating the cpu calculation it should consider the cpu calculation as well and this weight percentage the 100% should have the weightage for the sleep uh, samples as well here uh, the red lines are representing what uh, we are expecting from the perf tool so this thing uh, the left side we have already seen the left uh, in the previous slide and in this slide what we have taken we have considered the number of the samples so we have considered the four samples we missed because of the sleeping so that here we have considered so total sample this time will be 8 plus 4 so that is 12 including the skip sample so we are not considering to take the sample but we will count the sample how many samples uh, have been skipped because of the sleep uh, because of the task was in sleep and with same calculation but this time the sample count will be 12 and this will come to uh, the function one has only two samples so this percentage is actually comes to 16.6 percent and function two as it is having six samples so it will come to 50 percent and uh, we are having four samples not samples but four times uh, for four samples it was sleeping so that will come to 33.3 uh, percentage means uh, from total uh, cpu uses 33.3 uh, uh, percentage of the time the cpu uh, the task was actually in the sleep maybe scheduled out or some other ways So here we will see uh, how the perf is uh, getting the samples means collecting the samples because this is uh, important to know for the solution part so here we can see our target task is running and once we will start our perf record so init routine of the perf record will send some signal to the target task and within the context of the target task so perf software event init hr timer will be executed so it's a kernel function and it will uh, set all the parameters for the hr timer and it uh, after that the perf record will start the start timer so once the start timer will send some signal so in the context of the target task perf software event start hr timer will be called it will start the hr timer with the frequency or with the time uh, provided to the uh, uh, initialized during the any time or provided to the hr timer so once that tick is expired the handler that is the perf software hr timer software event hr timer will be called in the context of the target task so it will call some of the function and end it will call the perf get reg users so it will collect all the uh, register states and the other information required uh, which is actually a sample for the perf and this will be sent to the perf record task uh, and the perf record task will save this in the perf dot data so here uh, we need to note whenever there is a handler called so at that time the perf will capture all the reg register status and collect all the required information for the sample and send to the perf dot data same if uh, it's uh, the timer is keep on running so with every expire uh, expiration of the tick it will perform the same operation till uh, the stop timer is not called from the perf record so perf record would send some signal to the target task and in the context of the target task uh, it will call the perf software event stop timer so till we uh, it wouldn't call the stop timer this hr handler will keep on calling and it will keep on uh, collecting the samples so here uh, the red box is representing uh, its keep on uh, calling the handler and keep, keep uh, collecting the samples for the perf okay so up to here we have seen the very happy flow where we are uh, uh, able to get the samples but the problem is where we are not able to get the samples so uh, let's see that part. So why uh, perf is not able to get the samples? So up to here we have already seen in the previous slide. So here is the uh, main thing. Uh, so whenever there is a sleep gets called uh, from the uh, by the target. So 
at that time there is a uh, some kind of hook is implemented with the uh, perf implementation so whenever there is a sleep called so it uh, sleep uh, i mean in the context of target task uh, after the sleep it will call the perf software event stop timer so as it will call the stop timer so there is no timer so there is no handler will be called and still the wake up is not gets called within the con i mean by the target itself so timer is not running so there is no handler and it wouldn't capture any of the sample and also it wouldn't capture for how much duration it has not captured any of the uh, signal so at the wake up time it will call the start hr timer so that will restart uh, the timer and on the next uh, timer expiration or next timer uh, tick expiration the handler will be called and it will capture the samples so this is how uh, we are not uh, the perf is not able to collect the samples so here uh, representing there is uh, no sample uh, for the period when there is a sleep called till the wake up uh, is not called okay so in the solution part we will be uh, discussing only this uh, red highlighted box so solution part is uh, lies within this uh, red box only for solution uh, we have tried multiple uh, solutions and uh, some of the solution already present as a uh, cpu offline uh, that is based on the bpf so here we will be discussing uh, some solution which is uh, within the kernel side so in this solution we tried first to capture the samples uh, itself and in another solution that is solution 2 we will try to capture only the time uh, uh, for the time where we have not captured the uh, samples and we enhance we wanted to enhance the solution too so that uh, it will sample as well so let's discuss first solution that is the capture sleep samples okay this part we have already uh, seen in the previous slides so whenever there is a sleep so we will stop that chair timer and after uh, whenever there is a wake up so only at that time we will start that chat timer so because of this conditions we are not able to capture the samples so here what exactly we want we want to break this uh, hooks from the perf so that uh, timer will keep on running uh, independently means uh, it wouldn't get be stopped by sleep and uh, sleep means it wouldn't get disturbed by sleep and uh, wake up of the calls so if we will cross this so here we need to understand some part of the hr timer so if uh, task is running then the handler will be called uh, within the context of the target itself but if target is in the sleep state so handler uh, will be scheduled for some soft irq so in this case if task is sleep, uh, is already in the sleeping state so this handler perf uh, software event hr timer that will be called in the context of the soft IRQ. Uh, and it has to now capture the samples uh, for some other task, means this is running in some other context, but we want to capture the sample of the target task. So we may need to implement something like perf get reg targets. So this uh, may be present or may not be present. We need to cross check and this will uh, get the sample for the target task. And similarly, I mean, as per the earlier solution, it will send this to the perf record and which will store to the perf data. So this uh, having some disadvantages means we are keep on collecting the same samples for the sleep time and uh, Perf to data will the size of the perf to data will keep on increasing. Let's move to the solution two. Um, that is to <coughs> so here uh, what we want to do we don't want to capture the sample but we want to measure the time means for how much time we have skipped the samples and that time we will send to the perf uh, record and perf record will uh, capture that in the perf dot data. 
and the perf report will be using this uh, information while calculating all the details uh, for the cpu uses okay, let's see so here we have the target task so whenever there is a sleep so we uh, sleep will call the stop timer so along with the stop timer uh, uh, what we have done is we will just capture the stop timer so basically the local time will be captured to the stop time and whenever there is a wake up that time uh, we will capture the start time and uh, by subtracting this simply we will come to know uh, how much for how much time uh, how much time spent by the target task while it is in the sleep state so as uh, same sleep so there is a stop timer already called so no timer is running so no sample will be captured for this duration but only the time we will come to know for how much time it is in the uh, sleep state and uh, have not captured any sample. So this information uh, with some dummy uh, sample, so we uh, represented as a sleep time sample that will be sent to the uh, perf record us, which will be saved to the perf data. Okay, so now uh, at the of record side uh, perf report side so record has already stored this data into the perf data so at perf uh, report side so it's already some uh, functions which keep on getting one by one sample and processing that so in the upper part that is uh, normal sample it will get it will process the sample and it will add to the sample list so here in the red line that we have uh, tried in our poc so that is it will get the sample and it will uh, identify it's a sleep sample so it is having the information for how much time the task was in sleep state so it will process that sample and it will add to the sleep time so let's see now how the calculation will happen so in the calculation side uh, we have a sample time so that is uh, one second uh, per uh, divided by uh, sample per second so this sample per second we provide uh, to our perf tool while starting it and that will provide a uh, sample time so if we will use this sample time and the uh, sample count how many samples we got in the uh, from this list so that will provide us a samples time means total samples collector time and uh, here we already have the sleep time so total time will be sample times plus our sleep time and to calculate the cpu uses so here we need to use the sample time divided by the total time so earlier we were already uh, we were already uh, using the samples time so now we need to use the total time so this is where we will calculate the CPU uses and sleep time. Uh, we need to use the sleep time divided by the total time. So with this uh, POC, we tried some of uh, our um, some test program. So in this test program, it is uh, a very simple program. So it will start a uh, a uh, simple program uh, that is we can say a dot out so we need to provide one parameter that is pwm so according to the pwm provided to here it will call the sleep time so if we will provide let's say 10 uh, to this program uh, let's uh, here we have we have mentioned a dot out we started with 10 so that means uh, for 90 percent of the time this uh, program will be on the sleep state and only for 10% of the time it will be uh, running means it will be capturing this time and other things it will uh, be on the cpu so this program we if you will use this program uh, so in these snapshots so this is uh, the snapshot without our any poc so if you will run this program maybe with 10 or maybe any value so it will capture the only the samples count will change but here the percentage uh, representing which function called so that will remain same as 100% because it will not capture any of the sleep time uh, while the task was in the sleep so it wouldn't capture any of the uh, sample uh, 
our uh, if we will see in the perf record call so we have given the frequency for, uh, 10 and sleep is 4 so expectation is it should uh, capture a 40 samples but because it is only running for the 10 percent so it only captured the four samples okay so these are the snapshot uh, the uh, left one is the snapshot uh, with the existing perf tool and the right side is a snapshot with our um, solution to approach so after uh, with this uh, after calculating the sleep time so uh, with uh, I mean same uh, with same duty cycle we have executed the same program so here we were able to capture only the sam uh, four samples but with this uh, we are able to capture the four samples and that is actually we representing the 10 percent and after that we have captured the sleep samples so that is a 36 so basically these are a dummy samples only representing the time uh, for for the time uh, the target was in the sleep state and here if you will see very carefully so this uh, event count is also changed from 400 uh, millions to 4000 millions and main thing is here so here earlier it was representing 100 percent cpu was used in these functions so now it is only 10 percent is used for these functions okay so uh, solution uh, this is continue to the solution too so up to now what we have already done as a poc and what is the next step we are looking into our poc that is along with sleep time we want to capture the sample so how to uh, what extra we want to do so along with the stop time uh, we want to capture a sample uh, by using the same function that is perf get reg users so once we will get that sample uh, we will just uh, save that sample till we will not call the wake up so it may be uh, this duration uh, sleep duration may be more than what is the frequency to get the samples but we will only collect the one sample because even if we will get the multiple samples so all these samples uh, will have a same data so with this sample once the wake up will be called uh, with this sample the sleep time adding the sleep time so we will uh, send to the perf uh, record that will save into the perf dot data so here as we have the samples uh, so it will represent uh, the backtrace uh, in the graph uh, in in the perf uh, output that for how much uh, where actually uh, the target has spent the time during the sleep so if you will go back to the previous slide so here uh, even if uh, we have captured the sleep time we will representing 90 percent of the time uh, has spent uh, was gone while the task was in the sleep state but in this uh, backtraces there is no information uh, about for which flow it spent the time in the sleep state so that information uh, we can add once we will get these samples. Okay, thank you uh, so much. If you have any question or doubts. Yes. Ah, right. Uh, yeah. Have, have you uh, considered using trace events, uh, sketch switch trace events, in order to compute the the, the sleep time delta? Uh, yes. Oh, mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was wondering whether this is really a problem if you're tracing the whole system because you'll also get samples from the idle thread so if the task goes to sleep you will still get some percentage coming out of idle uh, but uh, that could be a different use case this sounds like it's more per task profiling um, mm -hmm. but uh, 
what I've seen, like, you know, profiling the whole system is that the, the percentages won't be 100% of something sleeping a lot. So, the, yeah, that, that was my, that was the thought I had. Um, actually, within, uh, I mean, from internal teams, uh, this problem is reported many times. Like they are having uh, multiple engineers and they uh, basically they want to see where exactly uh, the application is spending the time. Uh, means they want to trace the flow where uh, the application is calling the sleeps. So that was not able to capture uh, by using the perf tool. They were using some alternative tools. And uh, if you will add this information, so uh, they will be able to trace. And uh, we uh, recently I came to know. So this is already being done in some different way uh, that is called as uh, yeah. off CPU. So they have introduced yes. uh, off CPU. Yeah. Yeah, so basically they you can tell perf to trace the skets skets switch like Frederick was saying and the, you get you get a you get a perf sample when you hit the skets uh, skets switch uh, trace point and that is recorded already in the perf so you can already yeah you can already do this uh, but perhaps just need a little bit of fast processing yeah But I, I think he, he wants it more like automatic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, with that off CPU, uh, there is some dependencies with some yes. oh, yeah, right. kernel config. Is it and uh, uh, so as per the main page, it's written in the uh, off CPU that it would require a frame pointer. So if the application is compiled with the frame pointer only then uh, we will be able to use the off CPU. So that's. Um, <laughs> oh, OK, yeah. Yes, so there's an off CPU, which uh, triggered in on the it's a scale switch to aggregate the sleep time of its task. But it requires, as you said, a uh, co stack from user space. So basically works on, on frame pointers only. But at least if you don't have trace point, it at least can report some time on each task is slipping. But it, it cannot know where it is exactly, but it uh, at least says uh, how much it, it's slip. So, and uh, basically the starting point is the per event is it's designed to be calculated when the task is run, right? Task is running. So mm -hmm. if you want to measure the task is sleeping, as as others said, you need to uh, record different type of event like a sketch switch. And there's a common perp scat to do that. So you need to take a look at the, the perp scat command and there are a bunch of analysis already done with that uh, sky switch event mm -hmm. so what you were presenting was using cpu clock and we we tend not to use cpu clock it, we default to cycles uh as the as the event but because you're running inside of a hypervisor uh, and you haven't got the the pass through like perf events uh, working then you're using cpu clock so th this wouldn't apply for for cycles uh as, as a concern i have and then in the perf report output, you, you're showing like uh, for an event, you're saying you've got sleep and you've got the, 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 the event, but we could have similar breakdowns for kind of like speculative and uh, non-speculative instructions executed. So I, I think we, I, I think there's, there's a bunch of things kind of like in your talk about like, it'd be better to be able to like show in perf report when you have time on the CPU and off the CPU. Um, it'd be it'd be nice if we can show events together, um, uh, and so on. Uh, in some of like the the gecko profiling stuff that we added uh, in six point six, uh, then it might be possible to to add these things. Um, but I, I, I'm I'm struggling to see the motivation for a kernel change, especially as it would only apply for the the software event. Yes, it's in the software event, right?
I have uh, a, a question, which is maybe more general. Um, how uh, how well can uh, how can we uh, measure um, the, uh, the case where perf is or the, the, uh, using perf the case where a task is uh, running but is uh, waiting to be scheduled? Is that something that uh, we can measure this way or a different way? And, uh, you I mean, are, you, you can measure that time, but you but you cannot get like you cannot know where it is waiting to be scheduled, which may be useful, I think. Yeah, when the task is waiting on the uh, run queue, but it doesn't get scheduled, it cannot uh, spend CPU cycles. So regular perp cannot uh, sample those tasks. But if you really want to. Uh, see that, then you need to um, trace scat, scat, uh, scat switch and scat wake wake up trace well, points. Perf scat already yes. measures that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there is even a BPF based tool which is the canonical tool which is run queue slower. You you have run queue slower. It measures the time it takes. From being ready to run to running, and uh, yeah, and you can get trace point backtrace for that as well to see. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the 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 trace points are there. You you can use this uh, already. The default output for the tooling is the interesting part I saw. Is we have to, to we we have to. Consider a patch like that so that we can show uh, how long the the precisely how long the the, the profile of the application is waiting for I/O. It's off the CPU and uh, showing what are the reasons that these are out of the CPU is something also interesting. But we have on perf record the perf record dash dash out off CPU. So I, I think that, and it was not so visible because uh, it was opting uh, in six or seven. Uh, when you build perf, if you have what is needed, which is Clang, uh, a BPF scale will be built, linked with perf, and then you're gonna have several features that are based in this mode of operation. One of them is also build profile. So this should. Uh, become more uh, uh, vis visible and people should uh, start using it more. And then we can think about how to further use this information in the default output for perf report and perf stat. Even per you know, perf stat something, you're going to see how many cycles it took, how many cache misses or whatever, and how long it was waiting to be uh, running. So if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, all of this can already be done with record. The only changes needed are in report with once you yeah, have all the... Only in tooling, you don't need to change the kernel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Need... yeah. Nowadays, lots of features, lots of features uh, will be implemented as BPF skeletons uh, because the infrastructure is there. You you can collect those those things rather easily and then you can uh, run this on older kernels. You, you go to a machine with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, there is a backport there. Probably this of CPU profiling will work there. It's, it's possible because there were, there were backports. So uh, we should, from now on, I would say, to try to use BPF more often in, in Perf, to implement features in Perf. Only when it's something which proves uh, really interesting uh, and uh, then we can think about uh, this is a, in, in general it's with BPF like a, a scared X or things like that. If you if you do it in BPF, it's so good you 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 make it uh, inside the kernel. But if it's something a corner case or something like that or it's experimentation, you start with BPF and then you consider trying to do it in the kernel, not the well, other way around because uh, you will have a limited audience if you do it first as a kernel patch. You should do it first as a BPF 
thing that works, then you move to, to try to do this and convince the kernel maintainer that uh, this is so important that it should be done and we should wait for this kernel to be available uh, everywhere. Uh, are we any plan for uh, this uh, to re uh, get out of uh, frame pointer dependency for BPF? Uh, I mean to say, uh, if we are using this uh, off CPU, so dependencies with the frame pointer. So, is there any plan to solve this dependency? The applications which are not built for the frame pointer. Uh, the, the, so the um, stack sampling grabbing the entire stack is problematic in data centers because uh, you can be you can be capturing things like uh, encryption keys uh, and things like that. So the different stack trace mechanisms have got different you know pluses and minuses. Um, the, the other there's, there's LBR, the shadow stack features which have been enabled is, an, is another back trace mechanism. Um, I believe the BPF people want to support all of these things, but you know it, it's it's not happened yet. Okay, thank you. And and uh, there will be a talk I think at, at five o'clock today uh, by Stephen Rostad about implementing S frame, which is yet another way of collecting those things that is being discussed and implemented. There are patch sets for perf and uh, probably the uh, BPF stack. Uh, get stack will eventually uh, th there's work on, on multiple ways of efficiently getting uh, the backtrace without requiring user space to be frame pointer enabled. Mm -hmm. So, uh, basically, BPF doesn't have its own like a stack, uh, like a worker just use perf or there's like whatever uh, stack work available in the kernel. Yeah. So, BPF doesn't have its own. It doesn't make sense to have only just no difference for any like yeah. it's just because any code running right there. So uh, as, as soon as the S frame is mature, probably uh, BPF is going to get this, and then obviously profiling using BPF will get this as well. Yeah. So work is ongoing on, on that direction. It's a problem that everybody agrees, and that, that there are multiple people trying to to improve the current situation. So my concern about the, the BPF stuff is more the permissions, because all of these things work really nicely when you root, but you know if you're doing user profiling, then then we have to get past the permissions hurdle. Uh, right, like BPF doesn't have the perf per task event thing like that, uh, like manage that you attach to that task uh, only to that one. So uh, BPF doesn't have that concept yet. Right. Well, I shouldn't say yet, but I don't know whether they're going to have that ever. <laughs> but that's the uh, that's the trade-off. And we, there are ways like uh, try to explore what what can you do safely without uh, a root with BPF. And that's a long, much longer story. <laughs> so actually, I was playing with this. I was hoping that we, if I used the, the perf record with CPU clock. That should generate a sample even if it's, uh, the task is sleeping, but it's actually not. Did that miss something? If it's some easy trick that could do something, you just I mean, even this is sleeping, I would generate a. I was I was expecting the CPU clock because that's just the time space to generate a sample for me, but it's actually not. Yeah, but. <laughs> CPU you run into the idle state, so the CPU, the, the per CPU clock, uh, timer clock will be disabled. If the kernel feature no hertz has been enabled, so this is why you cannot receive the the timer event. Okay, so it's a config. Yeah, uh, to uh, change the config, it should uh, should work as I the, expected. I, I think <laughs> that if we disable no hertz the config, then that uh, yeah. The timer. But but now actually I don't think this is a common case. Usually that I think that no matter for both the server or for the mobile, the chip, uh, no hertz the configuration has been enabled by default. 
So if we just look to want to do profiling for this purpose, I don't think, for example, in the production, it's plausible. Okay. So, yeah. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see how this is related to no herds at all. At all. Like, uh, yeah, no herds should not be causing profiling problems. Yeah, I don't think it's a no herds problem. It, it's a, because it's a task event. It only activated when the task is scheduled, right? So it is get out, we disable the event. Yeah. So that's the problem. Unless yeah. you use dash A, I don't know if that's... Dash A is a, it's a full CPU mode, then that's fine. Yeah. But, but fine. Just now uh, he mentioned that it's not task clock. He mentioned the CPU clock. But I think he may be confused with task clock and CPU clock. But in this case, it's a task event, then that in convert, it should be converted to task clock. Maybe there's a problem. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.